Welcome back to News Now on PNC. As the Archdiocese of Agagna prepares for an important visit from three Vatican officials next week, a group of concerned Catholics is also planning to meet with a delegation. The group says they will hand over what's called a white paper. This is a very rare occasion that would have this many Vatican, Vatican officials come here. It's been dubbed a pastoral visit by the Archdiocese of Agagna, but some believe the visit from three important Vatican officials next week has more to do with the troubles plaguing the church than a mere trip just to say hello. Concerned Catholics of Guam Vice President Dave Sablon. For, for all the times that I can remember, the, usually they, they would come passing through. It usually, it's usually just the papal nuncio. And so he is someone that we could expect to visit with us at least once a year. But he's been here twice in the past six months. So there's something telling about that. Yeah, in addition to it being a rare occasion, um, it's also interesting to note that this is the duration of the visit. It's a seven-day visit. And normally they, they pretty much come in, spend a day or two, then, then, then they move to the next area. The three delegates are the Papal Nuncio Archbishop Martin Krebs, the Secretary for the Vatican Congregation for Evangelization of Peoples, Archbishop Savio Hontaifai, and Father Taddeus Novak. According to Archdiocese of Agagna Chancellor Father Adrian Cristobal, the visit is a gift to the island and will happen around the same time Pope Francis will be in the Philippines. And while that may indeed be the case, the concerned Catholics of Guam has requested a meeting with three high-ranking officials as they intend to deliver what's called the white paper. But if we can have a private audience, we will present effectively uh, the white paper, as we would call it, uh, of the issues that need to be addressed factual truths about what is occurring here. Among the many issues the concerned Catholics of Guam wants to investigate is a Redemptorist Modern Seminary in Jontnya. The group is concerned that many of its seminarians are actually not from Guam. Only two are among about 40 of them. That seminary is located behind me, just beyond these gates. The Redemptorist Mater Seminary in Jotnya, says Sablon, was originally intended to be a diocesan seminary. Instead, it appears the curriculum being taught at this seminary is similar to missionary work. As Sablon points out, many of the seminarians do not end up serving on Guam. And that's okay as well. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that because that's a different approach to becoming a priest. And so if that is the case, then be, just tell us clearly. You know, but I think it was promised, the Redemptorist Modern Seminary was promised to us as a diocesan seminary. Thanks, Janella, for that report. Late this afternoon, Father Adrian responded to PNC's questions about the Redemptorist Matter Seminary, saying there are 39 seminarians studying there, including 29 for Guam, 3 for Samoa, 4 for American Samoa, 1 for Dallas, and 2 for Kiribati. He also says that the Archdiocese only provides about 10% financial support to the seminary and not 100% as others might imply. And in other news, the Guam Royal Hospital says it is not responsible for the death of a five-week-old baby, Aiden Quayle, back in October of 2011. The GMH administration responded to a lawsuit filed against them in Superior Court by Aiden's parents, Michelle Green and Leonard Darren Quayle. The lawsuit alleges negligence by emergency room and hospital staff that led to their newborn's death. The new parents had brought their infant into the emergency room for breathing problems, but instead of being seen right away, the parents say they had to wait more than 30 minutes before being seen. In addition, the parents say it also took longer than usual to have their baby intubated because there was no available anesthesiologist, and their son was also made to wait before receiving his first dose of antibiotics. Their son later died of pneumonia, and the parents are now suing for $3 million in damages. The GMH says they didn't neglect the child and that they did exercise a degree of skill and care as they do with all of their patients. They are asking the court to deny the parents' claim for $3 million and instead to pay for the hospital's attorney fees. Governor Eddie Calvo signed seven bills into law today. Among the bills signed was Bill 376, which requires the completion of an independent economic impact statement relative to the minimum wage on Guam. Bill 418 was also signed, adopting the rules and regulations of the Peace Officer Standards and Training Commission. And Bill 428 was signed, establishing parity in the retirement annuity of the Attorney General of Guam. For the complete list of bills that were signed into law, log on to PacificNewsCenter.com. 
high school students navigated nuclear meltdowns, crossed frozen tundras, and ventured into space through the use of robots at the Guam Community College today. The real-life scenarios were presented to private and public school students participating in a workshop on electronics, renewable energy, and robotics. GCC Associate Professor of Science Ray Sunga says the students performed companies and had to build and design robots to complete tasks that solved the problems presented to them. This challenged the students to conduct real-world applications with science. We hope that this would inspire the students to get into what we call the STEM field, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And so hopefully through their ideas, through this little pilot program, we're going to see scientists that would develop new technology that would help sustain um, an island uh, system. All right, and will the weather be right for fireworks tomorrow? Joanna O oh has the answer. You know, whenever I ask my dad, Appa, when are you bringing me to this restaurant? He says, this year, within this year for sure. Lies, Dad. If you're watching this, you should be troubled. There are at least five more restaurants we need to go this year within 35 hours. Another year is passing by so fast. I pray and hope that you will be having a beautiful last two days of 2014. I'm Joanna O with weather. It looks like skies are in favor of those who are going out to watch New Year's Eve firework this tomorrow. Expect mostly cloudy with isolated showers tonight, mostly sunny with isolated showers tomorrow, and partly cloudy with isolated showers for the night of the New Year's Eve until January 1st. Winds are heading towards east for tonight and tomorrow daytime, but starting from tomorrow night and throughout this Thursday, it will be heading northeast with speed of 10 to 20 miles per hour. Temperatures are expected to go around 78 to 89 for all three days. That's it for me, and if you happen to bump into me in one of the five restaurants that I will be visiting within 35 hours. Hi. <laughs> I mean, Happy New Year. <laughs>